Shelly from HodgePodge Hoosiers. Today's task is going to be, I am going to make baked beans to put on the shelf. I got this recipe from Ruth Ann from Homesteading with the Zimmermans. Uh, I'll link the video description, her video down in my description. Uh, I really liked the ingredients she put in it. We're kind of picky on her baked beans, but I'm thinking that we're really gonna enjoy this. So I'm gonna give it a try because it seems like this time of year, we're always buying baked beans for to go with our grilled food. So to have this on the shelf would be great. Now her recipe is for quarts. So I am halving it because it's just me and my husband. So a pint jar is gonna be plenty. So the first thing I did was I have there's three one pound bags of navy beans in here. I rinsed them off good in cold water and I'm going to put a half a cup of beans per pint jar. My All American is a 915, I believe. And so it's going to hold nine pints per batch. So it looks like I'm going to get a partial batch to go again after that, which is good. Okay, yeah, I'll probably get another half batch. Okay, now the next thing you're going to put in them, get these all lined up so you can see it. is a quarter cup of ketchup. I didn't get to can my own last year. This is my favorite ketchup. So this is what we're gonna use. So it's a quarter cup per jar. See puppy dogs in the background in case any of you don't know I baby I doggy sit my grand doggies while my kids are at work So I'm gonna get these all filled up with ketchup and then I'll bring you back with what we do next. Okay, the next thing we're going to add is brown sugar. This calls for a quarter to a half a cup per quart. So I'll probably put about an eighth in each one of these. that we really like this because I'd rather can them than to buy them already preserved, uh, made in the store. Okay. Next 
next thing we're going to put in is mustard just says a half a teaspoon prepared mustard so it's going to be a quarter teaspoon which isn't going to be much for here since they're pints just put a little squirt in each one okay next is vinegar it calls for a tablespoon for the quarts so i think we're going to do a teaspoon and a half for the pints This is just apple cider vinegar. I did not get this out of the ball book. Like I said, I got it from uh, homesteading with the Zimmerman's video and that should be in the description she explains the process very well too okay there's our vinegar now so it's one teaspoon of salt, so we'll put a half a teaspoon in each one, since we're doing pints. This is pink Himalayan salt. You can use any canning salt you'd want. It's not recommended, I don't believe, to use the iodized because it can cake. All right, and then next is minced onion. Just regular old minced onion, and it calls for a tablespoon. So I'm just gonna put a heaping teaspoon in. Now this next one is optional and that's liquid smoke so I'm gonna go ahead and put some in now it says only to put a teaspoon for a quart so I've got a half teaspoon here I'm gonna try it if we don't like it I can omit it it's an optional ingredient it's nothing that has to go in Okay, now we are going to add hot water. Now when you add the hot water, you want it to go to just the one inch head space. Always stop at the, usually at the neck is when you can tell. Actually, it could take just a drop more. But I've got this tool and it tells on there, like if you go like that on the, Highest one, yeah, that's perfect. It's one inch. There. Okay, I gotta refill my jar. Okay, I've got the rest of them filled. Now you want to gently stir it around. In case there was any air bubbles locked in between the beans. They're small enough and they're gonna move freely. It's probably all right. But you want to combine the ingredients. Now's the time I like to get 
things like this can. Uh, I've got pizza sauce yet to do, hopefully later this week. I do my pizza sauce a little different. So I like to get that all out of the way before I have to start dealing with fresh stuff coming in every day in the, from the garden. And I do utilize our local farmer's market too. There's stuff that I can't grow easily here. I have grown it, cabbage being one of them. I get those cabbage bugs so bad, so cabbage worms. So I'd rather just go buy the nice big cabbage heads from the farmer's market and help support them too. All right, I've got my towel here. You want to make sure the rims are good and clean. Okay. And I have my lids here. I've got them in hot water. I didn't boil them but I like to get the gasket part softened in hot water. I just let them set while I'm getting ready. These are the ball canning lids. I was using Golden Harvest and I'm still going to have to use them some, but I'm starting to have more fails than I would like from that brand. So I've been trying to buy the ball. It's all I can get around here without ordering online, which I may have to start doing that. Rings, as tight as you can get with one hand. Pressure canner can't have it real tight. It's gonna go in. I've done got my three quarts of water in my canner. It's gonna go in there and once it hits pressure, you'll put your little weight on. Check your altitude, see what altitude you are. We have to use the 10 pound pressure for our altitude. And it's gonna be in there for 75 minutes. So I'll turn you around whenever it gets going, how the canner does, and I'll show you how I get the weight on and everything. Okay, we've got steam coming, good steady stream of it. So we're gonna wait 10 minutes and then we'll put the weight on. I ended up getting seven more pints ready to go. So when the beans come out of the pressure canner, I'll be able to put another load right back in. That should get us for the year. We don't eat them every week, but it's nice to have them on the shelf. Okay, I just put the weight on. I've got it on the 10 pound slot for my altitude. We want it to get up. Now Ruth Ann on the Zimmerman said to put, she likes to pressure can hers at 12. So I'll probably get mine up to 12. It usually goes to 12 a lot of the times anyway. So I'm gonna get it to 12 pounds and then I'll start adjusting my heat. And then we'll put the timer on. You cannot set your timer for the 75 minutes until you get up to pressure. I'm just about to go to 12, it's at 11 now. So I went ahead and set my timer for 75 minutes. So now we just gotta let it do its thing and then get them out. Now I did end up making seven more pints ready to go in when this one's done. But when these come out, that water's got to come back down in temp because these are not going to be hot. So the water in the canner can't be hot. You have to maintain temperature to the cans that you're canning and the water in the pressure canner so none will bust. So I'll show you that whenever I get ready to put it back in. Got a nice steady rock and we're at 12 pounds. That's what I want to see. All right, it's counting down. It's almost done. Still holding my pressure really well. So I can set this off. And all you do is turn the heat off. 
Now this gauge has got to go down to zero before this can be taken off. And then you still don't want to take the lid off because the change in temperature will still be too drastic and it'll cause siphoning. So I usually take the lid off and just tilt it on there and let it gradually keep cooling down. And I do tend to have better results with the siphoning. Okay, we've made it to zero. So I can now take off the weight and you can see there's no pressure buildup. So now I'm gonna unscrew these and just tilt the lid a little bit. Let it set for probably 10 minutes and then they can come out. And then I've gotta start getting ready for the next round. There you have it. 16 pints of baked beans. Please go check out Ruth Ann's video on her channel, Homesteading with the Zimmermans. I will link it in the description. And if everybody liked my video, please comment, like, share, subscribe. And until next time, bye for now.